I feel shaken up. God's given me something different from what I've normally received. But before I begin, I just want to begin with a word of prayer because I believe we need to be ready to receive it. So, Lord, I just thank you for this opportunity. God, I thank you for this family. I thank you for this appointment that you've called us to be in. And, Lord, right now I ask that you will open our ears to hear your word, God, not mine, but yours. So, God, let your spirit just flow through this sanctuary, God, with a transformational word for your people, God. We give you the glory, and we give you the honor, and we thank you that your word is alive. And we praise you for all that you have in store. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to start this off by jumping right into a passage that God gave me. When I asked him what he wanted to, me to preach, he didn't give me a title or a specific topic. He gave me this specific passage. So we're going to go into Exodus chapter 13, and I want to start at verse 21. And to give you a little bit of backstory, this is when Pharaoh released the Israelites. Before they reached the Red Sea, they've been released from their slavery. And it says, The Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire, and to give them light to go by day and night. In verse 22, He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of the fire by night from before the people. One thing I never noticed hearing this as a child is the Lord didn't just send a pillar of fire or a pillar of cloud. The Lord himself was the fire, and he was the cloud. So despite everything that the Israelites went through, all the craziness, all the doubt, you can say the Lord literally never left them or forsake them. It says he never took away the pillar of the cloud by day and the fire by night. The part that God really pointed out to me in this was fire by night. If any of you have been on social media, if any of you have seen the news, we are living in a very dark time. You can say we're living in a time of perpetual night, it feels as though. But God has this tendency in the darkest of times to show himself through fire. We've seen many examples of this, from the burning bush with Moses in Exodus 3, the glory of Mount Sinai in Exodus 19, and of course, the thing we all know the most, the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2. But if right there is not enough proof for you, we can just look at Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 29. For our God is a consuming fire. If you had any more question, our God is a consuming fire. He himself, the one who was with the Israelites in the darkest of times as the pillar of fire, he is still today that consuming fire. How many of us know if you put something a little too close to a fire, it can become a blaze? 1 John chapter 4 and verse 13. Stay with me. I'm going somewhere with this. Hereby know we that, that we dwell in him and he in us because he hath given us his spirit. And I want to jump over to 1 Corinthians 3.16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you? Now I don't know about you, but I don't think you can get much closer to a fire than the fire itself dwelling within you. So if you get a little too close to a fire, which we all should say we are a little close to the consuming fire of God, shouldn't we ourselves be a consuming fire? Shouldn't we ourselves be evidence of the consuming fire of God? John chapter 1, and starting at verse 6. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light. This L is capitalized. And I looked at it at the Greek, and it means to shine or make manifest by rays or fire. That all men through him might believe. He was not that light, capital L, but was sent to bear witness of that light, capital L. John himself was not the fire but he bore witness of the fire. We ourselves are not the fire, but we are to give proof of the fire. We are to show evidence of the fire of God, and we are called to be witnesses of the fire of God. 
Matthew chapter 5 and verse 14. Got a lot of scripture for you guys today. Ye are the light of the world. Notice that word light is a lowercase l. You're not the light, but you're the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle or put it on fire and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Verse 16. Let your light so shine. That word light is the same as we've been speaking. Let your fire so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We should not go a single day hiding the fire that has been placed within us. We should not go a single day where people question if we are a follower of Christ. A fire is noticeable. Why did God choose fire? Because it can't be missed. And you know what? It spreads. Fire spreads faster than you can even imagine. Spread like a wildfire. The title that God gave me for this was End Time Fire. And what God spoke to me and what he really put within my spirit for this is just as the Israelites needed the pillars of fire to lead them by night, God still is calling us to be pillars of fire in this end time because there are people in this darkness who need some hope, who need some evidence that God is still real. And if we can't provide that, where will they turn to? People need evidence. People need something they can touch. The word of God has told us that we are to expect a falling away. But what God spoke to me is that does not mean there are not people still who need to just get a little close to the warmth that we can give. There's going to be people coming into this place who just, they can feel it, they can see it, but if they can just get just a little bit closer, a little bit closer, is fire contagious? Does fire spread? Imagine, imagine if our fire was so bright and so burning, how many lives can be changed in this darkness of night? Are we standing called? Are we standing in the place as pillars of fire. The people of God who are called and chosen. I want to go to 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that should show forth the praises of him who what? Called you out of darkness and into his marvelous fire. We were once a people in perpetual darkness, but the God of all creation looked through time and space and handpicked us for such a time as this because he needs pillars to hold up the church. A church that they are trying to hold together with duct tape and string and whatever they can to keep it together. But if they could just get their pillars on fire for God and their whole church could be consumed by the power. Mm. I don't believe it'd be a small number. God knew what was going to happen in these end times. But just because they're coming doesn't mean we still don't have a purpose. So in closing, I just want to wrap this up. And God told me, we've put ourselves as living sacrifices on an altar. And we've all heard the saying, a problem with a living sacrifice is we get up. But they had something called burnt offerings in the Bible. Before God, they would burn their sacrifices. And how many of us have laid ourselves on the altar of God, but when the heat got too much, we got back up. The Lord is not here to harm you with his fire. 
But some of us fall under the pressure and the heat and the weight of what comes with it. We were chosen for this. We were chosen for this. We were chosen to keep ourselves on the altar. We were chosen to keep ourselves as much as strong as the heat gets to not get up. Because it's there at the altar that your life is changed. It's there at the altar we get the wisdom that we need. It's there at the altar we get deliverance that we need. Offer ourselves as a burnt sacrifice to God. We require the fire for that. And if we can't take the fire, how are we going to show the fire to those around us? Are we somebody that the world can look to in this time of darkness for hope? Or are we blending into the night? People should not walk through these doors and wonder why do they think they're so different? They seem as though the world's consuming them too. They shouldn't have to ask, they should be able to see it. Once upon a time, we got close to a preacher with the word of God that set our hearts on fire. Or we got some near to somebody who now became our spouse who set our heart on fire. Or best friends in high school who brought us to church and our hearts became on fire. There's going to be people who still need that. We're not greater than anybody else. We just know things that they don't know still. I pray that this word resonates because it's not something that stays here and we talked about this in the prayer room but it has to go out of these four walls because in here it doesn't seem like the world is crumbling around us and here we have the hope and here we have the joy and here we have our family but out there it's dark it's dark but we have access to the light we have access to the light, and we have access to represent the light. And that alone is a weight in itself. Stand with me, if you will. I believe there's a weight on this and a challenge for us to really look within ourselves. Are we hiding our little light under a bushel? Are we covering the fire when we don't want people to see that we're a little out of the ordinary from what's going on in this world? If we could just blend into the negativity, if we can just agree with the negativity, then people won't know that I'm a little crazy for Jesus. But you know what? That's okay. Because maybe they need to be that too. God chose us before we were formed in our mother's womb he chose them too. In the frustration, in the chaos, in the darkness, in the politics, in the social media, in the news, he chose them too. He formed them too. So if we can realize that this fire is more than just an example, but it's to reach the souls that God created, then maybe we wouldn't be so quick as to cover it and hide it away. I don't feel called to open the altar. I don't feel called to lay hands. But I feel a calling to just spend a moment with God and to reflect on what it is that He wants us to see within ourselves in areas that we need to improve on, in ways that we need to shine brighter than we have been. So God... We've received your word today. We've heard the challenge that's been brought forth, God. Search my heart, Lord, of all unrighteousness. God, reveal to me, God, the places, the dark places that your fire needs to bring to light. God, purge me of all those things. Help me to be, walk in boldness of the fire. Help us to shine brighter in this world of darkness. And use us, Lord, as a beacon and a pillar of hope in this end time. Use us, God, to lead your people into your house, God. Use us, Lord, to show hope.
for eternity. God, that this world is not all that there is. But God, there's something greater on the other side. Help us to not blend into the night. Help us to not blend into the darkness. But God, that we will shine forth and cannot be hidden like a city set on a hill. So God, in any way, in any way that I can change, that we can change, Lord, I pray you'll reveal it and let your fire burn it away. I thank you for this opportunity to hear your word. I thank you that it's alive. And I pray that you'll help us to carry it the rest of this week. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm just getting started here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's more. I'm about 20 minutes from one of the greatest feelings, and that's when I take all of this that he's given me, and I give it to you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Kingdom Gate family, I love you. No visitors today, but they're coming soon. There's a reason they're not here yet today. We don't have long. We've got one week, and then the week after that. I trust him. I trust him. He said so. God, I thank you. God, I thank you for this opportunity, God. I need your anointing, God. I need the Holy Ghost, God, to strip everything away, God. Uh, the, not to add anything to what you've given me. Not to take anything away from what you've given me, God. Oh, that I deliver the message for your people the way that you intended it on this day. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Last month I preached about soul winning. I want to follow up on that and, and how Easter opens doors of utterance for those that only attend around Easter time. And it's a great time to invite people to church. And it's a little bit safer, maybe a little less bold, because they're expecting it. They're expecting it to happen. God laid heavily on my heart those that are coming in from the left and the right. Those that are coming in from the left and the right. And during that message a month ago, I took some accountability for that. And I shared that with you. And I called you to action to take some responsibility to extend invitations to church, to extend invitations to our Easter service. Since last month, and Jasmine brought that up, she had her hand uh, along with me on that plow. So I appreciate her doing that. We sent out 100, over 100 invitations, about 114 invitations. Kingdom Gate sent out to, uh, in, in the mail. Thank you, Drew, for making the flyer. And these are people that were already put in our charge that had already at one time or another come in from the left or come in from the right, either at RPA or at this building. Thank you, Jesus. He's going to bless those efforts. He said that he would. I believe him. And on Wednesday night, we'll be looking for those to join us in intercession as we pray for that outreach. As we follow that up with prayer for that outreach. Because it's not going to be worth anything unless we pray about it. Right, Chris? Unless we pray about it. What's the urgency? The good news, that's the urgency. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. Here's the urgency. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then which we are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. We've got a message to share. We're responsible for sharing that message through his word, through fire, through invitations. And verse 18, wherefore comfort one another with these words. Because we know this, and it's important that we comfort one another, especially in these times. The good news, he's coming back. He's coming back. I caught myself watching a video. It caught my attention long enough to watch it for a few minutes. It was about the rapture. And the rapture had happened on a Sunday while church was going on. That's probably what caught my attention. There were some people amazed. 
not everybody that showed up prior to that made it. And then others came in afterward. And it got my attention. And I said, rapture on a Sunday, that would be awesome. That would be great. That would be just like Jesus. He was famous for doing unsuspecting things on the Sabbath. Why not? Why not? Sometimes I think about what I'm going to be doing when Jesus comes. Does anybody else think about that? Just me? You ever have that? I hope you come right now, Jesus, because I'm preaching right now. That would be great. Then are there other times it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. I'm, I'm the only one, right? I'm the only one. Praise God. I'll keep. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I don't know a better place. I'd like to enter the kingdom of God right from Kingdom Gate Church. That would be fantastic. That's what I want to do. Come up to get me at Kingdom Gate. That's where I'll be. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Uh, we are witnessing every sign. We're witnessing every sign of his coming is laid out in the Gospel of Matthew 24. We've covered it and covered it. I covered it myself. This world, it's, it's deteriorating. The world's deteriorating. The time of his appearing, it's coming more and more into view. How can it not? I love his appearing. More and more with every sign. If you want to know more about loving his appearing, or you don't love his appearing, see 2 Timothy 4 and 8. And you can learn about it there. Remember, we talked about these end times. These things must happen. They must happen. Some are in our sphere of influence. And some things we just have to witness. The wars, the rumors of wars, the nations rising against nations, kingdom against kingdom, have become commonplace. It's everyday media coverage for us to witness. Famines, pestilence, and earthquakes are nothing new under the sun. According to the preacher in Ecclesiastes 1 and 9, that is the title of my message, Nothing New Under the Sun. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. As we consider the implications of this verse, it can change how we respond, what's going on around us, how we view what's going on around us, current events, and our future. And it's don't worry about the little things. What it means is that everything we do outside of Christ, no matter how important, is temporary. Everything we do and focus on and worry about outside of Jesus is temporary. But I got this, and I got that, and I got this, and we will until he comes back. And we will until he comes back. Thank you, Jesus. Another Matthew 24 sign is that this gospel shall be preached in all the world. We pray for wisdom to reach the lost. With first, first, the message of salvation. Water baptism and the gift of the Holy Ghost. Then we can go from there. Nothing new under the sun there. Salvation. Water baptism. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. The preacher refers to the futility of wisdom in Ecclesiastes 1 and 18. For in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. I had to spend some time with that. I was catching on to something, Pastor. We like to know things. 
don't we? Me too. We want to know what's going on. What's going on? What do you mean you're not telling me everything? Tell, I want to know. I, well, I want to know. They want to know. Yes, what, what do, you, do you know anything? What do you know? What's going on? Tell me what's going on. What? We think we want to know things. The wisdom of the signs in Matthew 24, sometimes when we know things, it brings sorrow. It brings sorrow when those we know are deceived by false prophets. I want to know things. I want to witness the offense, the betrayal, and hate. It's, it's grievous. It's grievous. The longer we walk with God and the more mature we become, the less I want to know the less I want to know. I don't want to know anymore. I don't need to know anymore. In the flesh, it can hurt. It can be painful. Ministering to those whose love has waxed cold because of abounding iniquity. It can increase knowledge. Along with that, the sorrow. In the ministry. But, but, good news scripture, but 2413, it reminds us. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. These things must happen, including the ministry and sometimes the hurt and the sorrow and the grief. But it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it all. Thank you, Jesus. This pretty much brings us current. Pretty much brings us current in the year of end time authority. ETA, estimated time of arrival. The end time battle for souls in multi level ministry. We feed sheep and lambs by reflecting Jesus. In the case you didn't get it the first time, we are all called to Matthew 5, 14 through 16. We'll just read it along together again. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I think God wanted you to hear that scripture today. I believe that is adequate confirmation. You know, we often... I've said, and we often say, I can't imagine these days, like those that are out there, I can't imagine these days without Jesus and the Holy Ghost. Thing is, we can. We can imagine life without the presence of God. We have come in, and we still come in sometimes, broken, afraid, needing answers, and needing peace. But here, here, the sanctuary, like what was what Tricia was talking about. When those that come in, they'll know by his presence. They'll know they're in his sanctuary because this is where we entertain his ministering presence. That's what they're going to feel. Something for your, themselves. This is the place where we invite souls. Souls that are suffering and weighted with the world. Souls that are more worried about tomorrow than eternity. We are to reflect the Savior, the Comforter, the Peace Giver. We are to give testimony to the Healer. We prepare holy in our secret place. 
and cultivate a secret place for others. I needed to be reminded every day of Psalms 91. If you don't know, a secret place with secret power, know it today. If you do entertain the Holy Ghost, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read to you. I'm going to read Psalms 91, 1 through 16. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague Come near thy dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon. Shalt thou trample under feet, because he hath set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name he shall call upon me and I will answer him I will be with him in trouble I will deliver him and honor him with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation thank you Jesus thank you Jesus nothing new under the sun it's this that the lost need to hear and experience. It's this Jesus they need to know. Same Jesus, same covenant, same secret place. I wouldn't trade him for anything. Same message to those coming in. That in his house, in his sanctuary... His presence is undeniably known and is spiritually experienced. An encounter with God. I want to think about those that are coming in. I want them to have an encounter with God. That's what it's about. Yes, we're friendly. And we're going to be dressed up and ready for the occasion. Amen. But an encounter with with God. It was the encounter with God is why I came back. What he did for me is why I came back. A peace that I'd never known. A contentment that I'd never known. And the power of the Holy Ghost is what kept me coming back to his house. His house. Because the church will stand. Remember, the church will not fail, whether without me, whether without you. I'm repeating that. I might repeat it again. Thank you. I know a place, a covenant place, a secret place. You can have all your own. So today I, wa I want us to examine the readiness of our souls, of our souls. Examine the readiness and the condition of our spirit. We have had numerous, exhaustive, painstaking messages about getting our flesh ready. If you don't have that by now, just go with what you got. <laughs> just go with what you got. 
and let God work out the rest. Because it's our souls and the condition of our spirit that we want to reach out to those that are coming. Not my flesh. Not whether or not you're well spoken or what you're wearing. We have a covenant with God, an everlasting covenant through the blood of Jesus. Entertain his presence. Entertain the presence of the Holy Ghost. You can close your eyes if you'd like. It works easier for me to entertain and listen to what the Holy Ghost is saying. We talked about it in the prayer room. I got nothing shiny today. I got nothing new under the sun because there's nothing new under the sun for what it is that we're called to do. Last Sunday, there are those that were spoken over in such a powerful way. I'm so glad that I got to witness that. Xavier, I'm so glad I got to be a part of that pivotal moment in what God has called you to do in your ministry. And many others, what a service we had. But to take that and to prepare it and to cultivate it and to ready it is about your spirit. And it's about your soul and preparing in the spirit and preparing your soul. Trust me. I love to run around and dance. I love to watch those with so much more energy run and take four laps. And we wouldn't be a Pentecostal church without that. But for what we're called to do, we're going to have to go deeper. They're lost. They're coming in with so much weight. Show me a sign. Give me an answer. And God responds to that. Mention that how God responds to those that just meet him or to those that are reaching out to him in a way that they never have, how he responds. We want to be a part of that. You got to let him love you to prepare you, speak to you to prepare you, heal you to prepare you. It's here in his presence. I find perfect peace. If I need comfort, I spend time with the comforter. If you need answers, you got to listen. You got to close your eyes and listen. He'll speak to you. And then as we move forward, see mended hearts leading broken hearts, the healed praying for the sick, the delivered, shouting with those chained, moving and ministering in the spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, you're all I need, Jesus. And you've put in me everything that I need for what you've called me to do. Lastly, for this message, I'm going to hop back one chapter from Psalms 91, from the secret place, and I'll close with this prayer. Psalms 90, 12 through 17. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? And let it repent thee concerning thy servants. O satisfy us early with thy mercy that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. 
Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us and the years wherein we have seen evil. Let thy work appear unto thy servants and thy glory unto their children. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands, establish thou it. In the name of Jesus, amen.